Welcome back YouTube. Today we're going to be discussing guns. Actually today we're going to be discussing inertial reloading with firearms. No problem so far. Inertial reload. So one of the stars of the show today is going to be the Springfield XDM Elite in 10mm which just developed a new habit of liking to inertial load. I'm sure you saw that and heard that. My ears ringing. What is inertial load or reload? It's just that. Now before everybody starts freaking out on me, this is a dummy round. Uh, there's no primer in there as you can see. There's no powder. There's just a bullet. Um, through the magic of having a reloading press, you can do this pretty easily. You probably do this without a reloading press pretty easily. So your firearm is in a locked back position. You're just getting ready with your first magazine or you just got done ejecting an empty magazine and you're ready to go. You take your loaded magazine, which this one's not loaded with a live round, but the idea is, is that when you go to load the firearm and you give it the smack home, it closes. Now, is that a pretty good smack I'm giving it? Yes. But are we taught to give our firearms a pretty good smack when we're loading them? Yes. Especially under the stress of a firefight, we're taught to smack that thing like, I mean, smack it. When you're being taught tactics, you're taught to smack that thing. Boom. We don't want any chance of that thing not being locked in. We want that thing solid, period. It's not going to fall out after one shot or fall out as we're trying to chamber the first round in that magazine. So let's talk about this. The reason I'm even making a video on this is because every now and then we have the guns will do this on our channel and the Springfield XDM Elite, when it came back from the factory after having its broken trigger repaired, it started doing that. I don't know if it was just coincidental. I don't know if something changed at the factory. I'm pretty sure it's just coincidental. I think we've just reached that magical round count with that particular firearm. Well, it started to inertial load or reload, whatever you want to call it, or maybe you have a different name for it. Tell me if you do. But the bottom line is it started doing it. And I mentioned in the comment, and I always point it out when a firearm does it. The m p 10 liked to do it when we had our videos on that. And I just always point it out. Some people like that. They think it's a good thing. It's a feature to them. Um, I'm of the personal opinion. I don't believe it's supposed to happen easily. It's not supposed to happen in a brand new factory gun, uh, especially with a low round count. That's just my opinion. People have told me that Glocks are made to do that. I don't know. I'm, I don't even own a Glock right now. Don't worry. I've got one coming for the channel for you. Just for you guys, I'm getting a Glock. Hmm. Anyway, some people say that's supposed to happen, and hey, I have to just take their word for that. Now, I do have a question about police firearms. Are, does anybody out there know if police firearms specifically, if they're ever modified to do this so that they can have a quicker reload? Um, military sidearms, are they ever modified to do this, or are they ever just sent out of the factory with that as a feature? Um, in my opinion, guns don't come out of the factory ready to do that. I'm going to show you a handful of guns here right now um, that do and don't do that. So let's start out with the MMP45 full size 2.0. So this gun looks like it's in pretty good condition, but I can tell you it's got a high round count. It has thousands of rounds through it. I've taken it to classes plenty of times. I just don't carry it a whole lot. It's got, a, like I said, a high round count. It just stays at the nightstand position most of the time if we're not out using it. But it has a lot of rounds through it, so here is a dummy round that's got a struck primer on it with no powder. So, so starting from the non-fully seated position, which is usually how most people do this, pretty good smack. I'll give it a harder smack. I don't want to break my hand doing it. Now, in the totally seated position, trust me, that hurts. That's smacking it pretty good. And I'm not going to beat it on the table. But it doesn't do that. You have to drop the release. There you go. Now it has chambered around. So now let's move on to the next one. Here's a Smith & Wesson M&P 40. Um, I think this is a police trade-in. I'm not sure. I bought it as one. Uh, it's not marked any police department. It's got a funny serial number, but I think it is a police trade-in. And the funny thing about this one is, I don't know if you can see it in there, it actually has a magazine safety. So 
you have to have a magazine in this particular firearm for it to fire. I don't like that feature, and I didn't know it had that feature, but it must have come from one of those states where I guess it was required. So either it's a special serial number because it went to a special state that required that for civilian use, or it went to a special police department that maybe that was their policy. I don't know. Maybe you guys can let me know. So let's see how this one does. So from a semi-seated, a little bit harder, now that one goes. And that does that with a magazine safety. Now let's set it up again and start all the way seated. Does it pretty easily. Now, is that where? Is that design? I've heard that the 1.0s actually just did that. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Now, sample number three, here's definitely a used one. This is a Detroit police trade-in, for sure. DPD marking on the side. I've carried this gun a lot. I've shot this gun a lot. This gun's went to a lot of classes, and it just gets used a lot. And I know it came to me half beat up, and it's still beat up. So, let's see how this one does. So, from the semi-seated position, every time I can guarantee you this gun will do it. From the fully seated position, again, from the semi-seated position, and I'll try to go even lighter. It doesn't take much. So I know that this one definitely, in my opinion, has some wear that might be allowing that to happen. Again, if you guys think something different, let me know. Now let's totally switch it out. We have a Colt Delta Elite. Now 1911s specifically are known to have this piece round down, especially if you constantly drop the slide, constantly drop the slide, Eventually, that will round down on the frame, allowing for inertial reloadings. But let's see how this one goes from partially seated. Again, harder, harder, keep it seated. I won't get this firearm to do it. And like I said, they're notorious for doing it. There's a round in the chamber, so I'm not going to hurt my 1911, but there you go. It doesn't take much pressure to actually have it drop. Now, if that part gets rounded off, right here, if that little ledge gets rounded off, they'll do it. And now again, the star of the show, the Springfield XDM Elite. Partially loaded, does it. Already loaded, does it. So the question really is, is it a good idea for you specifically, or your surroundings or your family, your situation, to have a firearm that will guaranteed chamber around when you do that? Where are you pointing your gun? Who's around you? Where are you? If you're using this somewhere that you're not allowed to discharge a firearm, can you possibly have an accidental discharge? You know, it's possible. The gun has a firing pin that's locked back, and even holding the trigger, it's not going to slam fire forward. It pretty much has a captive pin in there until that sear gets released. However, malfunctions could happen. Who knows? And if for some reason you just immediately screw up and have your finger on the trigger when you weren't thinking something went wrong and you didn't expect to have a chambered round, I don't know how things go wrong, but accidents happen all the time. Keep in mind that this part is generally referred to as a slide stop and slide release. I've never heard it being mentioned in a manual or a book as a inertial assistance mechanism. Maybe you don't want a chambered round and then you just chambered one for whatever reason. Now, do you want this thing ready to go so that if you are ever in a firefight and you run dry, you can just strip the old mag, run the new mag, boom, and you're ready to go again? Hey, that may be your style. But the question is, is, is it normal? Please let me know in the comments what you think. There's a lot of smart people out there. I love the comment section. You guys rock. Do you know of specific guns that were actually made to do this? Or do you know of specific guns that were modified to do this? Like I said, were police models ever modified for this? I have a mixture of these firearms. Some do it, some don't. My shield will never do it. The m and 45 won't do it. Both of the 40s will. Uh, my 1911, one of them will, one of them won't. Uh, it's just the XDM does. We knew the 10mm Smith & Wesson did. 
I don't know. It's kind of like, would you want your AR to automatically drop the bolt every time you put a magazine into it? That might not be a good idea. It's the same idea with a pistol. Uh, and actually, people seem to have better muzzle discipline with a rifle than they do with a pistol sometimes. And while I have you here, I just wanted to show you something cool that I picked up from the store. I picked up these caviar rounds. I don't know if anybody's ever seen these before. They're from Duplex USA. Um, they're a bonded up with some sort of polymer or something. Birdshot, it looks like, in there. Uh, 12 gauge rounds. So we'll see how these perform. We might put these through some of our crappier gel that we have. But we'll definitely shoot a few things with that. And I also picked up these broadheads made by the same company, Duplex. Uh, these things open up some kind of weird way. These are steel, just open up expandy rounds. I don't know much about them. Um, anybody ever seen these before? They were really cheap, actually. So cheap rounds that are kind of weird that we could test out. I said, heck yeah, I had to grab them. So gel test coming on those. So thank you to everybody for watching. If you like what we do here at The Turkey's Opinion, please click like, share, and subscribe. Also, we're on Patreon if you want to directly support us there. Thank you to all of our Patreon members that are already over there. Until next time, stay safe, have fun, keep shooting.